Welcome to the lecture series on Renewable Energy Engineering. I am Mili Trivedi, Assistant Professor at Mechanical Engineering Department at LG Institute of Engineering and Technology. Let us start our chapter named Solar Energy. In this session, we will study about solar pond, principle of operation, solar pond power plant, binary cycle solar thermal plant, greenhouse effect. So now let us start. First of all, let us understand what the solar pond is. Now here, as you see in this diagram, a solar pond is a simple device for collecting solar energy. Generally, fairly large in size, that looks like a pond. In this type of solar energy, collectors uses a large salty lake as a kind of a flat plate collector that absorbs and stores energy from the sun in the warm lower level of the pond. These ponds can be natural or man-made. But generally speaking, the solar ponds that are in operation today are artificial. Now, let us understand the principle of operation of solar pond. The key characteristic of solar ponds that allow them to function effectively as a solar energy collector is a salt, concent salt concentration gradient of water. Uh, as we see, as we uh, say it a brine liquid. This gradient result in water that is heavily salinated collecting at the bottom of the pond. With concentration decreases towards the surface resulting in cool fresh water on the top of the pond. This collection of salty water at the bottom of the lake is known as storage zone while the fresh water at the top layer is known as surface zone. The overall pond is several meters deep. With the storage zone being one or two meter thick, the solar radiation is transmitted through the water layer up to the bottom layer which is heated up. The heated water layer of the bottom layer rises up. The bottom of the pond is painted black for the heat absorption. The warm water from the bottom is prevented from rising up the top. This is achieved by dissolving salt in high concentration near the bottom with decreasing salt concentration towards the surface. The most commonly used salts are sodium chloride and magnesium chloride. Now, the bottom layer is the convective bulb with the constant salt level and act as the storage of thermal energy. Hot water from the lower level goes into the heat exchanger where working fluid absorbs heat from hot water. These bonds must be clear from them to operate properly as sunlight. The sunlight cannot penetrate to the bottom of the pond if the water is murky. Murky means kind of muddy. The heat from solar pond can be used in variety of different ways. First, since the heat storing ability of solar pond are so great, they are ideal for use in heating and cooling buildings as they can maintain the fairly stable temperature. The ponds can also be used to generate electricity either by driving a thermoelectric device or some organic Rankine engine cycle. Simply a turbine powered by evaporating a fuel. One benefit of using this pond is that they have an extremely large thermal mass since these ponds can store heat energy very well. They can generate electricity during the day when the sun is shining as well as at the night because the water is heated. Now, 
Let us cover the topic named binary solar cycle and the thermal power plant. Before covering this, you have to see the solar power plant cycle in our diagram. So as you see, there is a generator, there is a turbine and if the water gets heated, we will get heated water and can generate electricity. Now, it has basically, uh, if we study about binary cycle solar thermal plant, <laughs> it has basically two cycles, water cycle and gas cycle. Solar thermal collectors collect the solar energy and heat up the heat transport fluid. In heat exchanger, as you see in this diagram, heat exchanger takes place, heat exchange takes place between water and ABD working fluid. The ammonia gets vaporized and hot ammonia vapor drives the turbine motor. It means in general, just like the thermal power plant, we can generate the uh, electricity, just like the normal thermal power plant, we can generate the electricity by using the solar thermal plants. So here, in the heat exchanger, heat exchange takes place between water, ABD working fluid, ammonia gets vaporized and hot ammonia vapor drives the turbine rotor. The exhaust ammonia condenses in condenser. The condensate is a pump back to the heat exchanger. Now, to understand solar thermal collector, we first review the definition. So, start. Solar collectors are the devices which use the heat energy in the solar radiation directly to heat the fluid circulated through the tubes. It means solar collectors, they are the devices, uses heat energy. How does heat energy will come? By the solar radiation directly to heat the fluids and this fluid is circulated in the collectors, collector tubes. The solar thermal collectors will be studied by these three parameters. First parameter is working principle. Second one is greenhouse effect and third one is classification of solar thermal collector. Now we will study the working principle of solar collector in this, also the greenhouse effect in this, but we will later study about the classification of collectors. So now start with the working principle of solar collector. So, Solar thermal collectors have, first of all you have to understand the name, solar thermal collector. Now there is the solar, it means we have to use the solar radiation. Thermal, it means there is, by using the radiation we will generate the temperature. And collector, it means we have to use that temperature, we need some collector. Okay, so these are basically two types. Water collector and air collector, water heater and air heaters. So here, solar thermal collectors have basic components like, as you see, tubes, absorber plate and glass cover. Now, solar energy is transferred through, through incidental solar radiations. Now you know what is incidental solar radiations. Passing through transparent glass, and falls on absorber plate which collects heat energy and transfer it by the conduction to the tubes which are kept in contact with the absorber plate. The fluid like water inside the tube is heated. The heat energy absorbed by the absorber plate and does not get radiated back to the atmosphere because it is covered by transparent glass which is non-conductor of heat. The retention of heat inside the collector is called as greenhouse heat. Now, first of all, here, <coughs> as you see how the collectors are work in our diagram, there is a glass shade, there are so many tubes inside the glass plate, solar radiation passes from this glass tube, glass 
cover to that tubes. Now this tube generally painted black in color. So now by the black color painted, it means black color can absorb much heat. So by that, uh, in in the tubes there is water inside. So water or any kind of fluid, that fluid get to heated. Okay. Now with this radiation which are coming from the sun passes through the glass plate and inside the tube inside the tube there is a fluid and fluid get heated this heat can be used to generate the electricity okay now let us consider what the greenhouse effect is so as you see in uh, in the diagram Greenhouse effect in which most of the heat of solar irradiance is trapped inside the system of earth atmosphere and prevented to get reflected back to the atmosphere. The earth receives energy from the sun mostly in the form of visible light. About 50 percent of sun's energy is absorbed at the earth's surface. Greenhouse gases in the atmosphere absorbs most of the infrared radiations emitted by the surface. Present absorb heat to the other atmospheric gases through molecular collision. The greenhouse gases also radiate in the infrared range. It is one of the principles of solar collectors. It is in fact conversion of solar energy into heat energy. There are many applications and benefits of greenhouse effect. On the earth, uh, if there is no greenhouse effect, the surface temperature on the earth would be very, very cold. We can grow vegetables in specially made glass houses in a cold region. Building can be warmed up by the greenhouse effect. And the remaining of the solar collector we will discuss in the next video. So students, this is the study on solar bond cycles and greenhouse effect. Thank you all of you for watching this video.